Hello everyone and welcome back. I... Warning right now. It is going to be a long video. I have a lot of different knitting projects to talk about. There's even a crochet one that I've never shared before because I forgot last week. Well, last video, I should say. Uh, can't remember what I wanted to start with. Great start already, but let's let's get let's just let's just dive right into it. We're gonna leave all the life stuff, update stuff, not even for the end because this video would be two hours long. But you know, I can direct you to my dark water sweater videos if you want to hear about what I've been up to. And spoiler, I think I've actually already talked about it, but a new sort of knit with me project is coming. So if any of you are really interested to hear about all my life drama and things like that, there's not that much drama, I'm just trying to play it up a bit. You can hear about it in that video. And I think that's actually it. <laughs> I don't know why I said and again. Let's get into it. What am I wearing? Because isn't it beautiful? It's something I finished knitting last year, I think. I definitely started it last year. The wool came to me in 2019 and took me a while to find the project for it. But this is the Triscow, I think that's how you pronounce it, sweater. Um, I used Hedgehog Fibers yarn in Lagoon in DK weight, which came to me because my mum ordered it. And then when I showed it to her, she sent it to me because she lives in Dubai and shipping stuff to Dubai is just a nightmare. So she was like, I'll send it to Nina. And then when we see each other in the future, remember this was back in 2019 when we never thought we wouldn't see each other all the time. Um, because we kind of would travel relatively often every couple of months we'd see each other. And she was like, then Nina can bring it to me. And then when I showed it to her, I kind of explained how in love I am with this colour. Don't you love? I'm just doing an arm workout, holding my arm up. Anyway. Um, how much in love I was with it. Mum was like, I like it, but it's not what I thought it was. So she then went back onto the Hedgehog Fibers website. I'm going to put my arm down. <laughs> and found a kind of darker blue that she really loved. And she was like, Nina, you can keep this one. And I was like, Jan, for me, I love you. <laughs> And kind of then because of how it came to me that I didn't know it was going to be for me. It was just really special for my mama. Um, so I took a while to find the right project for it. And then eventually settled on this. So let's start with a complaint. Which is a personal preference, of course. I don't like how wide the neckline is. <laughs> I think that doesn't suit me. It's fine. I did make this cropped um, because I would... I've worn it before with, I think, over a dress. Um, but it's currently way too warm in the UK to wear anything under this. So it's frustrating how wide the neckline is. So if I ever knit it again, like with my hair in front, I think it's fine. But if I ever knit it again, I think I do fewer stitches for the neckline. Um... So go for a smaller size there and then just do more increases. It, it will mean the yoke will probably be much longer unless I do like circular increases before I do the raglan. But then it starts to become a different pattern, doesn't it? But I have discovered I don't like wide necklines. But I have discovered this garter stitch ribbing. I love. It almost makes it look like it's hasn't been knitted like it's been... Like I sewed this jumper, especially because you get that line up here. I love it. And it's also got a... I'm just going to... No, no, I'm standing up. <laughs> I'm not risking it. It's also got it at the bottom. It's just less of it. Um, but I love it. And it's got eyelet increases, which I'm not a huge fan of. Your The original pattern uses fingering with mohair. So it kind of hides this. So it's much more like the Aurora sweater that I've shown off before. But I wanted a DK one. And so it's just a bit more obvious. Over a dress, over a blouse, over a shirt. Not a problem. When you're wearing it like this. Just a bit, bit holy and see-through. 
but that that's fine. I normally wouldn't wear it like this. I just wanted to wear something handmade that I hadn't really shown off before. And this was also a way of talking about one of the projects I finished during the time when I wasn't filming without having to just kind of like hold it up. So that's the first thing. Whew, I feel like I went through that really quickly because I'm like, we've got a lot to say, so we need to get through it quickly. I'm like, slow down, Nina. I am going to grab my cup of tea that I forgot in the kitchen. I'll be right back. So it's a cup of peppermint tea that I made over an hour ago and forgot about because I've already filmed my German video. And there's something, I love peppermint tea, don't get me wrong. But when peppermint tea gets cold, I find it starts to taste medicinal. That's um, not always my favorite thing. Anyway. Whew, I'm gonna calm down. Let's start with one of my first finished objects. I love it so much. It's my Aito shawl, it's done! Look at this pretty little thing. So, last time I talked about it, I was here. <laughs> Oh, actually, it might have been... Oh, no, no, had I already stopped? No, no, no. What was that? Yeah, no, yeah, no, 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 yeah. <laughs> Just think a bit more new. Last time I was down here. And I still had some of the dark grey left. Well, middle grey, I should say. The dark grey is further down here. And... I was like, oh, I should hopefully have enough it should be fine maybe i'll need a bit of the lighter gray it's fine as you can see i needed quite a bit so i had to finish off the lace section in the light gray and also do the last garter repeat and the bind off i do actually have to say i'm really proud of the bind off normally it's either too tight or too loose and i didn't do anything special but i think it's got a decent level of like stretch and bounce to it but yeah, so I ended up needing quite a bit of this lighter grey and I didn't do the whole switching out slowly like I tried to do here. I just wasn't interested in trying to make it fade somehow. I was like, whatever, it's just going to be a stark line and I'm okay with it. I quite like it actually um, because it sort of mirrors what I've got at the beginning. Now, if I'd knitted longer with the black, I wouldn't have needed the lighter grey, but there was a reason that the black I didn't use very much of the black I'll talk about that later but so I finished this within a couple of days the bind off took a really long time because I think it was like 220 240 stitches and with the plotelope being a pencil roving on spun yarn it's a bit breakable and with binding off you definitely have to be careful people also say with bi binding on <laughs> with casting on but the way that the shawl worked, I think you only had to cast on one stitch. As in do a slip knot, and then you just started to do increases already, so I didn't have that issue. Which was nice. In some ways it was the perfect project to work on trying to get to know Plotelope, because you start off with just garter stitch, so it's quite simple to get to grips with and some increases. And then you've got the lace section, and by the time you get to the bind off, you really know how to work with the yarn. And now I feel really confident working with Plotelope. And the only issues I had was when I got caught and tried to yank it free. And of course the yarn broke off. But yeah, so my Ito shawl by Melody Hoffman is done. It has been worn twice already. Uh, because even though it's been sunny in the UK, at least up here in York, it's still occasionally been quite cold when the sun disappears behind the clouds and when the wind comes out and... I did post on Instagram a picture I really love where I went for an evening stroll and was wearing it and the sun's like behind me coming through the trees and I was like, mm, spring, it's nice. It hasn't been blocked yet, <laughs> even though I've already worn it twice, just because I've been wearing it and haven't found, haven't made the time correction, haven't made the time to really soak it and then spend time building up my blocking mats on the ground so I'm hoping to do that soon especially because the weather should continue to be warm I think in the UK so it means I'm not going to be able to wear it anyway but it does still occasionally get a bit chilly especially as the sun goes down but I'm so in love with this 
It smells so good. And it's like a cozy hug. And talking about, as you can see, it's very hairy. At least I think you can see. Which can make it itchy, especially if you start sweating. Now, the two times I've worn it, I didn't really get sweaty. So I can't really say anything about the itchiness based on sweatiness. Gross. But it's... When I wear something like this jumper, I can't really feel I'm wearing something against my skin. This makes its presence known, is how I would describe it. It's definitely there, but I would still kind of describe it. It's not like, ooh, so soft. It's just like, okay, yeah, I'm wearing something. But in a way that it's, it's like a hug, you know? When you hug people, sometimes, you know, it's a bit rough and scratchy depending on who you're hugging. And that's what this feels like. <laughs> so I love it. I think it's absolutely wonderful. I, in some ways, current, it's, it's not what I actually want. But part of me wants to say, it's the only thing I ever want to knit now. <laughs> but I could potentially see myself doing another one, either just in one color or definitely a brighter set of colors or one bright color because I think this is a bit moody and depressing, which I love. I am all here for the moody, but I'm also here for the bright colors. So, love it. Love it. Would highly recommend, especially if you're interested in giving Plotilopia a try, you can do it with just, if you do it in three colors, you can get through just three plates. And I think at about five pounds a plate, you can get that entire shawl done and, 15 pounds maybe i'd say under 20 pounds with shipping and stuff and that's amazing and you get to use some amazing icelandic wool which is nice the next thing that's done is a pair of socks which kind of goes with what i'm wearing so i shared these last time they're not for me they're for a friend of mine well should i even say that I feel like I'm trying to keep it as secret as possible. They're for someone else. They're a present. And they're both done. So I alternated my hair. I alternated my hair. I alternated which main colour I used because this was the one of the sister sets by Ducky Darlings. And it comes with 250 gram skeins. Two different colours, but like matching. And I used helical knitting to create these stripes here. And then alternated them for the second sock. And now they're both done. And I'm really happy with them. So I haven't washed them and blocked them yet. I don't have sock blockers in the sides. But I still want to block them because the heel. So I used a fish lips kiss heel. It always just kind of ends up a bit twisted and not nice looking. Same thing with the toes. And I find the ribbing a bit as well. So I've done that before with socks that I've gifted to people that I've just kind of soaked them for a while and then just laid them out to the approximate measurement they're meant to be at the end and just didn't have sock blockers, which makes it easy. You kind of had to measure it. But it just means that when they get them, they look nice. But when they wear them, they can still kind of, you know, block themselves to the measurements of the actual foot. But so they're done. And the last finished object that I have, I don't have here <laughs> to show because I finished the foxtail socks. I'm so happy with them, they're so pretty. Uh, Georgie has already posted a picture on her stories, I think it was, and she did tag me, it was lovely. And I did, while I don't have them to show right now, because I wanted to send them off as soon as they were done, ends were woven in, didn't block them because she has sock blockers in her size, so I thought that was better, and we agreed on that. But I sent them off as quickly as possible so she could have them as soon as possible because I've been knitting on them for so long. But I did film a little thing. I think it was like I'd finished them the night before, got up on time. I think I did a bit of my thesis writing um, and then was like still looking super sleepy, sat down, recorded it and went to the post office. <laughs> so now you get to see some footage of me looking super sleepy. And from the past, I think it was last week or something that I sent them. So enjoy that. Hello, everyone. I'm in my usual setup, but I'm not actually, <clears throat> pardon me, dressed um, or 
Oh, my stomach's crumbling. I've only just kind of gotten up. But I want to head to the post office this morning. So I quickly sat down, haven't got my lighting or anything. I've just sat down <laughs> um, to film this. Because the reason I'm heading to the post office is because I finished the foxtail socks. Aren't they beautiful? So you've seen this one before in all its glory. But last time I showed this one off in my podcast, I was just up here and now I've finished it. Now you can immediately see this is where my beginning of round is. So I hate that because this crosses over, you get the whole stitch shift um, and it just makes me mad. But that's that's what happens. So that's not as pretty, but this side is pretty. <laughs> and I finished these. I think I did most of the foot in an evening. And I think maybe the toe decreases too. And then the heel I had to finish the next morning because I was just way too tired. And with an afterthought heel when there's colour work involved, I need to take it slow and be careful. But so it really didn't take long to finish these, though I did post on my stories that I got to about down here. I was almost finished with this brown stripe. And then I looked back up and I was like, why do these look really weird? And I realized, so every time I've knitted this section here, I always forget to do these little brown stitches in between. So that's exactly where I catch the brown yarn. So catching my floats, because this is a really long length to carry them. But I always forget to actually knit it this round because I've caught it down here, but then here you actually meant to knit it. So this time, I was like, this is the last time, every time I've knitted this, I've made that mistake. So this time I went, I'm not going to make that mistake. And I ended up knitting it a row too early. <laughs> and I got to about here and I was like, they look really weird. And then realized I'd missed out the row just below that one. Ripped back, knitted it all again. Um, and it was fine. But yes, they're done. I don't know why I spent so long faffing around with these because in the end they didn't actually take me that long. Because like I said, I did most of this in about an evening. So I could have finished these easily in two weeks. Sorry, Georgie. But I'm heading to the post office now, sending them to you. I hope you're happy with them. Um, and your yarn's been beautiful. But you know that. You know I love you, Ron. But they're done. They haven't been blocked because my sock blockers aren't the right size. Georgie has smaller feet than I do. So they still look in a bit, especially like the heel, looking a bit scraggly and scrunched up. But Georgie did say she's got sock blockers in her size, so she'll just have to give them a block when she's got them. Which will hopefully be soon. Um, I'll probably send them first class just so they arrive nice and quickly because she's been waiting for these since beginning of February I think was when she sent me the yarn maybe I can't fully really remember anymore anyway so they're done I wanted to show them off because I'm not going to have them for my podcast episode but yeah now I just need to make a pair for myself because they're beautiful and I will say by the time I got to the end I was like I want to keep going now <laughs> I really like found my flow with them. Felt like I was in my element. But yeah, so you won't see them um, in my actual like podcast episode, how I will be recording that one. You'll see this little clip because they'll already be gone by the time I uh, film my podcast episode. Because today is the twin. No, no, we're not in the 20s yet. The 15th. Thursday the 15th of April and I'm not recording until like the week after so and I'm not going to make Georgie wait any longer but yes I dropped the other one <laughs> foxtail socks by the petite near are done and I am quite happy with them they're beautiful so I hope you enjoyed my sleepy face that's all I have for finished objects but I still think that's I'm, I'm happy with that. A pair of colorwork socks, which use three different colors. Nice. A simple pair of vanilla socks. Also nice. And a whole shawl. Though I didn't have to knit much on it anymore. Works in progress. There's so many. <laughs> and I have not made a lot of progress on a lot of them. 
But progress is progress. Doesn't always have to be a lot. So once again, because I film my German videos first now, because they require a bit more focus and attention and energy. Um, if I film them second, I just have no energy at all. Whereas with the English ones, as you're probably noticing, I'm a bit more chaotic and all over the place when I film second. But I think that's better than my German videos where I'm just like, what am I even saying? So I hope that's okay. <laughs> anyway, let's next talk about my Otre Yoke cardigan. This is what it's looking like. It's not that different. <laughs> I did a little bit more on the body until I ran out of that ball of yarn and then decided to move on to the sleeves. I'm not alternating skeins. I'm not helical knitting. I don't care. With decreases and stuff, I helical knitting I can get behind, but alternating skeins in a traditional way just bothers me. It just bothers me, especially when I've got decreases and stuff. So I haven't done much of the sleeve. You can see it's on hold because I'm currently knitting on something else that needed these particular needles. But I still have, I think, over 10 more decreases that I need to do. And currently I'm just not working on it because I've got something else that I need to work on instead. So, thought for a second the needles were attached. So not much to say about this. You can see that there is quite a bit of difference in this skein compared to the original one, that it's much kind of brighter brown and more orangey. I love it. I think it's awesome, especially because you've just had the color work finish and then boom, the sleeve gets like really intense. So I love it. I'm hoping to be able to focus on this again soon, but I've got two test knits again that I need to focus on. I don't know how I keep managing to time it that I always have two going pretty much at the same time. I, one is manageable, two can be stressful, <laughs> but it's my own fault. I signed up for them. Just poor planning on my part. So that's the Otre Yoke cardigan. Not really much to say. The decreases are going fine. I want to do the sleeves first um, just to make sure I can add as much length into the body while also keeping yarn behind for the button band, which I will probably do before I block and steek it. Just so I've kind of, you know, done everything before the steeking and potentially ruining of the project as in some ways my mum is really worried she said like if you get to the steaking point and it's absolutely ruined don't don't call me <laughs> she's like I can't I can't deal with that stress but I've done plenty of research other people have steaked with superwash yarn before it's just you have to do some extra bits that's fine so progress on that one is slow and I'm not sure how much time I'm gonna have um, to invest in that over the next two weeks because of the test nets, which I'll get onto soon. Next, we'll talk about my nemesis, my love and hate project, the Nobu shawl. <laughs> it's still here, people. It's still here. If you've been here from the beginning watching my videos, you know my struggles. I made some decent progress since last time, mainly this morning when I was talking to a friend of mine. Um, so I was here last time I showed it and I've knitted all of that. So not as much progress as last time because I think I was like here last time. So I did maybe double last time, but progress is progress. Maybe that's what the title of this video needs to be. Have I used that title before? I don't think I have, but progress is progress. <laughs> and just like with my thesis, Maybe that's why I have a love-hate relationship with the shawl. It reminds me too much of my thesis. That you just have to keep working and working out and every little bit that you do gets you closer to finishing and being at the end. Mm. I just had a realisation. It's like Lord of the Rings. Um, any of you who are... It also works for a master's thesis, but especially a PhD thesis. If you watch Lord of the Rings and kind of just start to replace the ring with the burden of doing a PhD and writing a thesis, you really start to, also if you haven't been through it, but you start to do that, I think you start to understand what it feels like. And I wish I was exaggerating, but it is that kind of a journey and you need other people to help you through it. So there you go. There's an activity for you if you want to I'm, I'm telling you, go watch Lord of the Rings, extended edition if you can, because it's the best. 
and you can understand what the people in your life are going through or, you know, if you're going through it with the thesis writing, you can kind of feel a bit better about the struggles and know it will be okay at the end. You will make it through. But yeah, so <laughs> just got really distracted there. Progress is being made. It is just still slow going. I'm hoping once I get to the decrease section. So I'm currently what? Maybe here? I said in my German video I wasn't going to show off in comparison. But once I get to the decreases, I'm hoping it will go a bit quicker. I remember enjoying these twisted stitches. The bobbles are not so much. Not that you can even really see them. But the twisted stitches were nice. And the fact that you had less and less stitches every row. That was nice. But the way that I'm kind of doing it is, like I said, I was working on this when I was talking to a friend of mine online today. And that's when I try to kind of knit this when or if I'm watching a show I really like because I'm so immersed in the show or talking to my friend that I don't realize I'm working on this. It's I, I feel like I need to apply all the tricks that I use when I don't want a thesis right, but I have to. I feel like I should apply it to this now. What a funny realization to have. But that's the Nobu shawl. It's definitely going to be done this year. I'm not going to set myself, like I've said before, not setting myself any goals because it will just be done. It will be done at some point this year. That is the only goal I have. Next thing. <laughs> um, so the next project, I was shockingly surprised. I knitted on it as much as I did. It's the Spring Intentions Wrap by Cat Weaver, who's currently running a knit along. Sorry, I'm just watching as some wool's about to fall out of bag. I'm just going to catch it before it does. <laughs> so the knit along's running, I think, until beginning mid early May, something like that. And last time I was down here, and now I'm up here. So this is a little stitch marker from Adventures in Yarn Craft. It's actual yarn that she uses to make these, which is adorable. And you can see I'm on my third color. So the blue here is a happy accident color. Mm, goes quite nicely with what I'm wearing. <laughs> um, so that's a happy accident color. This one at the bottom here, this one, this one is Tulip Garden. This one is Darling. And this one is promise. Nope. Spring has sprung. <laughs> and all of them except the happy accident color is from the mystery sock club that Georgie had running last year. And I thought it was perfect. They were all spring themed to include them in this. So I'm only using three contrast colors instead of the full six, um, which should mean I use up pretty much all of the yarn. It's a plumpy base. So I think it's like 350 meters per skein. And it should be that I use up most of it um, and potentially, I think, can't remember my gauge was okay. I have a feeling I've got more stitches, less length. So I can either block that out or if I need to make it longer, I should still have enough yarn to just add a few extra rows at the end. But I love it. I love the colors together. I am in love, especially with this latest color. I was desperate. The reason I did all of that knitting, I think it was in one evening, was because I really wanted to see what this looks like knitted up. And I think it's just so beautifully spring, all the pastels and stuff that you've got in there. And I feel like if you've seen Georgie's Fairy Godmother colour, I feel like this is the perfect kind of companion to it. But, like, but still different because the Godmother color definitely is like you've got the colors of the different godmothers and stuff in there from Sleeping Beauty in case you didn't know what yarn I'm talking about and this one has a lot of the similar colors but more pastel and with more of a kind of yellowish greenish base but I think together that could be quite interesting um not that Georgie currently is dying this up but you might be able to convince her because I really think it's beautiful knitted up I, I want to see it a bit more because currently there isn't a lot of it and might at some point have to get in contact with her and be like look do you by any chance think you can figure out how you dyed it because I need more of it 
and then holding it with potentially fairy godmothers on like suri or mohair could be quite beautiful because i think they'd match well without being exactly the same and i think that's quite nice so that's the spring intentions wrap i haven't worked on it in over a week now I haven't really been able to attend the Zoom sessions, uh, Discord sessions recently because I've just either been really tired, had other stuff going on, so I think I've missed the last two or three maybe, which is sad because I was enjoying it, but, you know, life happens. So I've kind of put that one to the side. You, you'll notice a trend. I keep saying, love this project, but put it aside because I'm trying to focus on the test nets. So just insert that at the end of every, every project. But trust me, I'll probably say it anyway. <laughs> Next. I really feel like I'm I'm rushing. I'm just like, it's okay. If the video is long, people can pause it. You don't need to rush through this. I think I'm also very hyperactive now that I've finished a video and I'm like buzzing off the, the high. <laughs> so I'm sorry if this is a bit much for anyone. Okay. The next thing I've actually made some progress on is my telegram cardigan. So I've split the body and the sleeves and haven't knitted, or did I knit one row? I think I knitted one row. So currently the cast on stitches are still really pulling apart, which is frustrating. But you can see we're in the pinks now. We're in the pinks. And I think, where is it? Next, I've got a proper, like, light, almost baby pink, I would say. And then we're in the purples. Um, I put these labels on myself because I got confused because I didn't keep them in the boxes. And I think I've mentioned this before because I was bringing, brought everything to Dubai, opened it in Dubai, then brought it back. I didn't want to bring it back in the boxes. I have the boxes, but didn't put them back in. Anyway. <laughs> so I have some progress on this. Did I put a marker in of where I was last time? Maybe? I think it was here. Um, so pretty much, oh yeah, of course, I stopped after the v-neck increases and now I just do shoulder and body increases without the v-neck. So now it's going straight down. So I did all of that in just a couple of evenings, I think. Constantly changing color is quite motivating. But also frustrating because I haven't wound all of them because I don't want them to get like messy and stuff. But once again, not going to be knitting on this for a while. As much as I want that to be done, especially for summer, because if you haven't seen Georgie's advent calendar from last year, that's the yarn for it. You start with the red, you go into the pinks, into purples, into blues, into greens, I'm pretty sure it was. And... I feel like those pops of color that you've got and like that almost rainbow, I think is perfect for summer. And because it's fingering weight yarn, it's quite, you know, open and light and airy um, and just perfect as a light layer in summer. So hopefully I'll be able to focus on that soon, but I'm loving working the broken rig, rib, rib of the telegram cardigan, Becky Sorensen, haven't said her name yet. And because it's worked flat, it's quite nice with the broken rib that you knit one row. And then when you come back, instead of having to purl everything, you knit one purl one all the way across. So then it means you're knitting, you've got way less purl stitches than you normally would. And it just makes it, I quite like knitting, um, knit one purl one. I find that change of the yarn forward, back, forward, back, quite nice and motivating. Um, so I'm loving it. I'm already planning my next one and I'm already planning on knitting a box car, I think it is, which is like the jumper version almost because it's also broken rib, also by Becky Sorensen. Beautiful. But sadly, it is a project that I kind of just have to push aside and focus on other things. Next up is the Woodland Cardigan by Anna Joanna. I have not made a lot of progress on this because once again, I've been focusing on other things because of the test nets and whatnot. <laughs> but I do actually have a progress keeper in here. So I've literally done maybe four, five rows. I'm still just on the back section. This is taking a while because the beginning is worked flat. And this is a project 
that it's looking like really big, but my gauge is okay. Anyway, I'm getting distracted. The yarn I'm using is one of the limited edition bases that um, Eva Robinson from Woolly Mammoth Fibers stocked a while ago now. And non super wash, absolutely love it. It's going to be a steaked cardigan if you haven't seen it. It's got color work at the bottom. And it's just slow going because I there's no, even though we're having a knit along amongst us friends, there's no like direct pressure to finish this. And I've just got too many projects on at the moment. And as much as I love this, I am loving working with non super wash yarn. This is one of the projects that often has to kind of be put to the side. I also just haven't got the needles on it right now because I'm knitting something else with the same needles, which is always a bad sign. Don't start something new if you have to remove the needle from another project. I feel like that's the number one rule for me and I clearly haven't stuck to it. But this is definitely one of the projects when it calls to me at certain times where I'm like, I need that feel of that yarn in my hands and feel that project you know, come together and the knitting needles. And I then typically don't, because there's no push right now to get this done anytime soon, because I've got other projects I'm, I feel like I should focus on instead. It means that this only gets picked up when that kind of desire for that feel of the yarn and the needles comes. And it doesn't happen too often because I've got so many projects on the go anyway. So slow going, and once again, not sure I'll be making much progress anytime soon. I am really trying to be much picky about test knitting, um, but I already said that before, and then I still fell into the hole of doing two at the same time. And I'm trying not to cast on too many new things, but you'll see later on I wasn't that well behaved. <laughs> Talking about my first test knit before we get into the drama of new cast-ons. This is the currently named Basket Sweater by Liago from Fibre Tales. Last time I showed it, I think I was at about the same point, but I knitted it all again. There were issues with the increases for a lot of different sizes and they were kind of fixed, but then it just kind of got worse and worse as we went along. And so eventually, um, Lego was like, okay, I need to talk to my tech editor and we need to sort this out. And she kind of changed quite a few bits, but said, look, you don't have to, the stitch count should still be the same. You don't have to rip back. But I decided to rip back because I kind of wanted, there were a few bits I wasn't too happy with. And I was like, no, I want the jumper done properly from beginning to end. And now I'm currently on hold and have been for, I think over a week because there was a, another problem with one of the increase rounds. And I think I should be getting an update on that today, maybe tomorrow, so then I can continue. I am loving this. I have said it last time, I like an intense test knit. I don't mind if I have to rip back and redo things, absolutely fine. And I'm just loving working with this yarn. And in some ways it's a good thing um, that I haven't been able to work on this because it's allowed me to work on my other test knit because if I could, this would be the only thing I'd knit on. Every time I go to sit down when a bit of the pattern was like okay again, I would just knit, 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 and then be like, no, I've come up to another issue and then have to wait. Um, so in some ways it's a good thing. I haven't been able to work on it. Could have potentially already been done, but then I would have had to rip back a lot more. So the yarn that I'm using is by Snelden. It's a DK weight, 100% wool. It doesn't say which one. 100 grams, 260 meters per 100 grams. And I currently don't know if I have enough, but it shouldn't be an issue ordering more if I if I do need more. But I love it. I had issues last time trying to describe what this yarn is and what it feels like, because it's so unique in my opinion. And that still stands. But not too much to say because I'm back at the same point again, roughly. I think I might've been slightly further along last time but I kind of did do more knitting <laughs> and we changed, well, I say we, Lerga and her um, tech editor changed the types of increases we've done. Um, Cause I think originally we did a lot of make one right. Now we're doing a lot more lifted increases, which I really like. I love lifted increases. So 
I'm hoping I'll get an update on that pattern soon because I really want to keep working on it. And with DK weight yarn, it shouldn't take me too long to knit, but I think the design has like eight inches of positive ease. So it's going to be quite oversized and that's going to be a potential problem with getting through it quickly. But I think Lego already said in an email that depending, you know, how we're all doing, she's more than happy to extend the deadline for the test knit because there's been so much waiting around for an update on the pattern. So we'll see, but I think she wants it done mid-May, and as long as there aren't too many more big issues in the future, I don't see why I wouldn't be done with it. So we'll see. Oh, my throat is starting to get sore from all the talking. That's all the projects that I've shared before. So next, we've got new cast-ons, and we've got a lot of them. So I've been trying to go, if you finished a project, you can start one new one. If you've finished three projects like I have, you can start three new ones. What I've been trying to avoid is finishing three projects and starting five new ones. But that's kind of what I've done. One of them doesn't really count because I'd already started it two weeks ago. I just forgot to talk about it. So we'll start with that one first. So a bit of background before I hold it up, because it's, if I just currently hold it up, it's going to look really weird. So I've got a niece who lives in Australia, who really loves the TV show, the kid show, um, Bluey. So you can watch it on, what's it called? Uh, Disney Plus, if you've got access to that. And I quite enjoy the show too. So it's about a dog in Australia her name is Bluey and her younger sister Bingo and their family and it's just so cute how they talk with their little Australian accents but then also just you know good kids shows I think it's nice when as an adult you can still kind of take a moment to reflect on the lessons they're trying to teach you you know typically it is about sharing and things like that but it's just nice and really cute and I think in some ways for a lot of us who've, you know, during the pandemic been stuck at home more, might be worth just watching a few of those. Because I did have an interaction with a friend of mine the other day, yesterday actually, where I said, surely there must be consequences to all of us not having interacted with other people in person as much anymore. That we've mainly been interacting online, talking online, even, you know, that is different to talking face to face. And I was like, surely our social skills have suffered because of that. He made it a joke, an inappropriate joke, like always. But he then kind of seriously said, yeah, that, you know, can happen. And so I'm like, aren't kid shows quite good to kind of remind us to be decent people and be nice to each other? Anyway, completely sidetracked. But she loves Bluey. And so over Christmas, mom and I looked into it and we found that, of course, there's crochet patterns for Bluey. So I did start this. Um, a little while ago and had about half the body done. I've got all the bits of it done now and I'm going to hold up the body. Don't get scared. <laughs> it's got eyes, but I think the first thing you'll notice is it's, it's a bit twisty and leany. So people actually commented that below the pattern, which I didn't see at the time, that that happens. I am not an expert crocheter. I would still very much say I'm a beginner. This is the first time I've done colour changes in crochet. And you can kind of see if I hold it closer up, you can see some of the yarn through until about here where I started to learn a bit more to kind of tug that contrast, not contrast colour, but to tug the colour that I'm carrying along a bit tighter so it's not as loose in there. So still learning, but I think it will, it will be fine for her and I might make myself one in the future because I really like Bluey too but I think I actually like Bingo more I don't know I think there's something really adorable about Bingo so I might make a Bingo instead but as soon as I hold up like this is creepy and I posted a picture on my Instagram stories of all the bits without the body like the eyes weren't attached yet and I was like I can't decide if this is cute or just really terrifying <laughs> and people laughed it was funny but as soon as I add the nose and mouth, look, it's so cute, it's little bluey. 
So I've got, oh, I won't remove it because otherwise it gets creepy again. <laughs> and I've got the arms that aren't attached yet. The ears I realized when I was recording my German video, the wrong color, they're meant to be the dark blue. I need to do those again. I did the same thing with the legs. I did the colors the wrong way around. The legs, the little tail. So she's coming along nicely and should be done pretty soon. Um, I'm just trying to take it slow because I really haven't done a lot of crochet and the crocheting itself is done now other than the ears that I need to do again. But I want to make sure, sure I sew everything on properly, especially because my niece is four turning five. Yes. And so I do still want to make sure everything is secure because, you know, little kids can be rough with toys. So I want to make sure everything's nicely secured. But so since my last video, <laughs> even though I didn't show it off, I was about here with the body. So finished all of that, did the eyes, did that, did all the extra bits. Oh, I forgot to say, she's also got eyebrows. <laughs> so cute. And the yarn that I'm using is, I'll show it off. I've got one here, Rikurumi. Um, which I just bought off um, Georgie's website, The Fiber Fox. Oh, it's very shiny because um, she sells it on there. So it's 100% cotton. It's a DK weight yarn. And the hook I'm using is 2.5 millimeters, which is quite small, but it's actually been okay. And it means everything's quite tight. And so the... I'm sorry, my arm's sore. <laughs> That's why I'm doing this. Um, so when I've been stuffing it with like the cotton fluff stuff... It hasn't actually been coming through because that's an issue I've had before that when you don't crochet or knit something tight enough it just starts to come through which is annoying. Next project. So I had finished my yarn on the run. I'd finished my intersections socks from 52 weeks of socks last time and talked about yarn from Waku Yarns, this beautiful red here. And I said, I'm going to make the Una socks. And here's the picture of the pattern. And this is what I'm going to cast on very soon. Maybe that evening, maybe a few evenings later, I was like, I can't stop thinking about that yarn. I need to cast on now. So grabbed the book, got into bed with the knitting needles and everything I needed and listened to it, was listening to a podcast, and as I was flicking through to try and find the pattern, I found a different pattern, and I started that one instead. This is why you sometimes just shouldn't plan. So, the pattern I ended up making was, they're called Gerste. Gerst, I guess you'd maybe pronounce it in English. I, My mom pointed out to me that that's a German word, whether that is actually what the designer meant. I think she is German, so it could be but I'll say Gaster because that's, I think, how you're meant to pronounce it. And I've got one done already. So it's a really simple design. So a really simple design of just knit and purl stitches. And it's toe up. Apparently I've got an obsession with toe up now. And then eventually with the leg you knit all the way around and it's a twisted ribbing at the top, which kind of is in line with these knit, twisted knit stitches that you do. Really simple. Um, she gives you two options in the pattern for a heel. I went for a German short row because I quite like them. And it's similar to the Fish Lips Kiss Heel, but this fits me better than the Fish Lips Kiss Heel. It was a bit, I have to do more German short rows, but I think I might've done it slightly wrong. It just felt really awkward. So I don't know if that was me or if that's just how they're kind of meant to be. But I did the first sock really quickly, I think in like three days or something, which is always a sign of like, this is a pattern I'm really enjoying if I get through quickly. And if I start the second one quite quickly too. So I think this was like in one day I did all of this as well. So making really good progress. They'll definitely be done with the next two weeks because this is a project that now um, that I've started the pattern on the top of the foot, it means I don't have to check the pattern anymore until I get to the short rows and the short row heel. And then I just quickly read through that again and then I'm able to go again. Um, so just a really easy pattern, bit more exciting than a vanilla pair of socks, but doesn't actually require 
too much focus and attention, which is nice. And I've been loving them. And the Waku yarn as well, the way it's knitting up, I think it's beautiful. So then, because I saw, oh no, I'm knitting this up so quickly, they're going to be done so soon, I have to start my next pair of socks. Because I'm trying to knit 12 pairs of socks from 52 weeks of socks, because Michelle from the Loveliest Yarn Company is currently running that kind of like challenge this year. And I've only finished one so far. So I was like, oh, well, I'm breezing through these. Let's start the next pair already. Instead of, you know, just focusing that attention on the pair that's not actually done yet. It was also partially because I've been trying to find the yarn for one of the patterns for a really long time. Since the book's been out, since I've seen it, I've wanted to knit these socks. Haven't been able to find the yarn and then I finally could. And then when it arrived, I was like, I need to start these. So part of it was the the Gaster socks were done. Like the first one was done so quickly. I was like, oh, I can start the next pair. But partially it's also just I really wanted to knit with this yarn. So the next pair of socks that I've got to show you, which is a new cask on, is the Imke socks. Imke? 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 Something like that. I'll have a picture up. And I really wanted to knit them exactly as they are in the book with exactly the same yarn. And the yarn in the book is Blacker Yarns Mohair Blend. And it's sold out everywhere. Even on the Blacker website, they've got none of the colors in stock. I was even happy to settle for a different color. Just give me the yarn. Because, and I've got it, spoiler, I did manage to find it. It's a wool mohair blend. So instead of having any nylon or any sort of plastic, you have mohair to give you strength instead. So it's just a nice alternative if you don't want to buy any yarn with nylon or plastic in it. But the way I managed to find this was I was literally Googling like mad, being like someone somewhere must have it. I even reached a point where I was like, I guess I'll have to buy it internationally and let it be shipped to me from America or Canada and potentially have to pay, you know, import tax or whatever. Even though Blacker Yarns, I'm pretty sure is UK based. I was like, this is just ridiculous. (laughs) But then... I came across a knitting shop in Scotland who didn't have an online shop, but she did have pictures of some of the yarn that she sells. And she was like, just call me or email me and get in contact. And, you know, we can sort out how to get the yarn to you, how to pay all of that. So I asked her, I was like, it says you sell this mohair blend, but do you have any in stock? And she's like, I do. Here are the colors. And we talked back and forth a bit. And this is the original color used in the pattern. But I'll show you at the end some more so this is all i have currently for the sock i've lit once again toe up see what i mean the intersection socks gaster socks imca socks apparently i have a thing for toe up sock patterns so i've only just finished the increases for the toe and the next round i'm pretty sure is now the actual pattern so i haven't done that yet it's a cable pattern from memory um And I think goes all the way like around the front of the foot instead of like the intersections where it was only like occasionally you had the cable. So I really just wanted to get a feel for what does this yarn feel like when you knit with us and just really wanted to get started and I'm loving it. But I'm now trying to finish the Gaster socks so I can then really enjoy these. But the mohair blend currently is so interesting. It's really like fluffy and hairy definitely more winter socks and I'm excited to see how they wear in comparison to my nylon socks I've never had a hole in any of my socks even the ones that I've worn to death in some of my winter boots and I do feel like these are very much winter boot socks but considering how hard the yarn was to find I might be really precious about these (laughs) so we'll see we'll see but loving it so far, haven't got to the actual pattern yet, so mainly just chatting about the yarn there. Ooh, we still got more. <laughs> Unbelievable. Spent all of last video talking about how I'm trying not to start as much new stuff, and then she has all of this. The next thing I have to show you is the other test knit that I'm currently doing, which I could have started... I think two weeks ago, I think I got the pattern just before I filmed and just hadn't started yet. So I thought I'd talk about it next time. And this is where most of my knitting attention has been going. So this is the, let me just make sure I say 
there's a lot of words, so I don't want to get it wrong. The Color Block Boxy Tee by Victoria Lewis. So the same designer behind the Aurora sweater. Um, and so she kind of asked, like, I've got another design. Do people mind testing? And I was like... And I think I hadn't... When I agreed to it, I'm not sure if I'd started the basket sweater yet. And I was like, yeah, I can probably do it. I'll help you out. And this is in four-ply yarn, but she also has it. So fingering weight yarn. But she's also offering it in DK. And I was like, is it okay if I do the four ply fingering weight one? Because I don't really have a lot of DK in my stash. I just never really buy it. And she's like, yeah, that's absolutely fine. I'll put you down for it. And it's quite an oversized summer like t-shirt. So you can see I've already split the sleeves and the body. And I've just run out of yarn. My first ball of yarn. So now I think I might actually do the sleeves first. Because it's a t-shirt, they're going to be super short. And let's talk about the yarn. I chose to do a contrast color for the ribbing at the top, which is from Ducky Darlings. It was one of her stash builder yarns. So it's a 50 gram skein. And by chance, it managed to, um, it matches perfectly with this yarn I've had in my stash for just a short while. And this is Amy March by... West Green Loft Yarns. And I love this colour so much. Oddly enough, I it's very Amy March, as in like from Little Women. But it oddly enough also reminds me a bit of Peter Rabbit. Just me. But I think it's beautiful. And I'm so glad that I finally got something. Because I've been... I couldn't decide what to knit with it. It was so special to me. Because it's so beautiful and I love the book Little, Wom Little Women. I love the movie with um, Winona Ryder. The new one I have mixed feelings about. I liked some things a lot, but with other things I preferred the Winona Ryder movie. And so it was just quite nice that I think this is perfect. What a nice thing to just throw on with a pair of jeans when it's warmer. Beautiful. And I love that this color I had in my stash just matches so perfectly. I feel like you can't even tell it's a different, like a blue from a different um, dyer. So like I said, I'll do the sleeves next. They shouldn't take long. And I think this could definitely be done in two weeks if I focus on it. And then I've got one less test knit to focus on. <laughs> but it's one I'm really excited for. Um, the last, the Aurora sweater had eyelid increases like this one. But this time we're doing knit front and back. And I love the look. I've never done knit front and back for raglan increases. I've only done the eyelets and make one right and make one left, I'm pretty sure. And uh, leaning increases as well. But I've never done knit front, front and back. And I love the look of it, I have to say. And then the last thing I've started. Yes, there is one more. <laughs> This is now tying back to the Ito shawl, where I said there's a reason why I didn't use much of the black plate of the Plotilopian. And that's because when I first bought the Plotilopian, I bought five different colors. Was it five? Five different colors, I'm pretty sure. And didn't really have a plan, but was like, I'll just play around. The yarn's relatively affordable, so it doesn't matter too much. If I can't find the perfect project, we'll just use it as playing around yarn. And then very quickly found the Ito shawl was like perfect. Not going to need all of it. And then I was like, okay, what weight is it? What else could I do? And I was like, I need with the black and the white that I have, make a Moomin hat. Because I saw... Um, I saw the pattern for it. It comes from a book. And I was like, I, I need this. I need this. Moomin is so cute. <laughs> They're so cute. So this is the black that I've already started. I'd already started using for the Ito shawl. And then this is the white I still had untouched. And I started this late one night at like 11, 11.30, maybe even midnight. Because I couldn't sleep apparently until I started this. I that's when it gets dangerous for me when it gets late and I haven't gone to bed yet and I'm like that's when I always cast on new things because I get restless so I really should just go to bed and not start anything new and I haven't got much I'm just on the second row third row I think now of color work and so there's not much to show doesn't really look like much yet 
And it's so nice that I've done the Ito shawl because now doing color work with Plotolopi is super easy because I know how to hold and work with the yarn. It hasn't broken yet and casting on was fine because I just know how to work with this yarn. And so it's been really fun to work with color work wise. I am annoyed that my cable is so short, so this just looks like a mess right now. But all my other cables are in use, which is also a sign I need to finish things and not start new things. And I am a bit worried because, like I mentioned with the Ito shawl, that kind of hairy, rustic yarn, when you sweat, gets much itchier. And with a hat, I have a hot head. So I rarely wear beanies because my head's already so warm. So I'm not sure how much use I'll be able to get out of it. But what I often do with beanies is because I have such long hair, I often wear it more like here. So it never actually touches my skin, it touches my hair. So I might be able to get away wearing it like that. Plus, if I ever get a chance to kind of go to Norway again or anywhere really cold, it might actually be perfect for that. Because then hopefully I won't sweat. And as I start to sweat, I'll just take it off. <laughs> but we'll see. I'm hoping... Even if it just becomes a thing where I'm like, look at this cute thing I've knitted and I never really wear it. Or if someone else gets a chance to wear it, I just needed to knit this. And that's been the thing I've wanted to knit since I started the Ito shawl. And then I think that's what was motivating me at the beginning because I struggle with shawl knitting. But then I just fell in love with that project. And now I've got this lovely thing as well. So that is the last project that I've cast on. But I still have more yarn to show still have more well I've shown a lot of yarn haven't I but I've got some new yarn even though she's trying not to buy as much she's trying she being Nina is trying to not cast on as much is trying to finish more and is trying not to buy as much yarn I should stop setting goals for myself because then it literally means I don't stick to them Let's start with the first thing, which was that Mohair Blends by Blacker Yarns that I already showed in the grey colour. And here it is in the kind of like a red maroon I bought. And I also bought a lighter green and a darker green. I just didn't want to hold all of them up. You'll see them in the future when I show them off. So I already shared the story, so I don't have to do it again. But it's so interesting. It's, um, if you've seen um cat weaver's podcast heather and hops she made the intersection socks with not moomin mondine i think is what it's called that yarn by retrosaria that then again i think it's rosa palmer it's confusing anyway mondine yarn i i kind of commented on her video and said, and I don't remember if I've said it in the video, I find that Mondim has a kind of almost like fatty feeling. Um, it could be, you know, lanolin or something like that. And I find this has it too, but because of the mohair, it just feels a bit, it just feels so interesting. I wish people could easily get this yarn. I don't know why they're just so sold out. I've tried to look online to get information. I've emailed them and I haven't heard back. So I hope it comes back because it's so amazing. I really love it. I don't know how it wears yet for socks, but we shall hopefully find out in the future. And I just bought a few colors because at first I was like, when I got the email saying like, yep, these are the colors I've got in stock. What are you after? How many do you want? I was like, oh, maybe I should just wait. Like, I've got plenty of yarn. I can knit plenty of other socks from 52 weeks of socks. I should just wait. And then I went, but considering how hard it was already to find this, do I really want to risk it? So then I was like, I'll buy a few different colors. <laughs> and that's fine. It's commercial yarn, so it's not that expensive. Um, but it, I think it was still relatively pricey from memory because it comes in 50 gram balls but I was like I don't need too much for a pair of socks so I just bought a few colors and I'm really happy with it really happy I made that investment and then we haven't talked enough about fiber fox have we <laughs> um she had so Georgie had an update two weekends ago last weekend I can't even remember anymore Time is just flying by for me. 
And her fiancé, Ben, has been dyeing yarn with her now. And she's kind of, you know, helped him out a bit, taught him all the different bits, but kind of just let him be free at the same time. He loves Pokemon. I also love Pokemon, but I don't love it as much as he does. Like, I think he knows a lot more than I do. But so here's some of the yarn that I've got. This is Togepi. So if you know anything about Pokemon, if I say the Pokemon names, I'm hoping you'll then be able to... If, I don't want to include the pictures because I know not everyone's a Pokemon fan, but this looks like Togepi. And then this one is Crustle, which is one of the newer Gen 1s, which I don't know. I'm an old, hardcore, like, only believe in the first Pokemon, gotta catch them all, not these extra ones. Anyway, different, different rant. And I think they're absolutely beautiful. And I was originally just going to do some socks out of Togepi, but now that I see them together, part of me is wondering if I should use them for the mystery knit along that Georgie is doing in collaboration with Harvey Knits, I think is her name on Instagram. I think it's Maddie Harvey, I think is her name. And she designed a shawl using Georgie's yarn. Um, and the mystery knit along for that, so we don't really know what it's going to look like. The mystery knit along for that is starting in May, I think. And I might use these two. I might still save this for socks because it's so cute. I might just use a different color mustache, but use this as one of the colors because the contrast here is amazing. But now that I'm thinking about it, I'm like, but socks will be cute in this. But either way, it will turn into something beautiful soon. So I'm already talking about a future cast on because that's another mystery knit along and I don't like doing them later. I like being part of the mystery. Um, and the last thing is a crochet book. Now that I've been crocheting more apparently that I've been wanting for a really long time. So this is Crochet Iconic Women. It's 15 patterns of just a couple of really amazing, incredible women from different countries, different time periods, different backgrounds, all of that. And I love the fact that the way that it's laid out is you obviously get the information on the yarn and all of that, but then it tells you, you've got the cute picture of the woman that you can crochet up, but it also tells you a bit about why she was included in the book. So a lot of them, I think, I'm hoping most people will know all of them, but I think it's especially cute, you know, if you've got young kids or if you've got nephews, nieces, grandkids, family, or just friends with kids. I think it's really cute to be able to, you know, crochet up one of these cute little, you know, amigurumi women that they can, you know, just play with. And also be able to kind of tell them the story behind them and why they're inspiring and amazing. And that's not just amazing for little girls. It's also amazing for little boys to hear about as well. And I just think it's really cute. Look at all of them. I love that Jane Goodall comes with a little chimpanzee. It's so cute. But the first one I'm going to be making is Jane Austen. I absolutely love her books, but I'm actually making this for a friend of mine. So the same friend who's getting, who has actually got now... They arrived finally in Australia. Uh, the Gryffindor socks that I made and the Fox socks I designed for her in Through the Wardrobe yarn. The Fantastic Mr. Fox mystery like sock club that she had. So this is the first one I'm going to make. And I think a lot of the yarn I'm going to, well, the cotton I'm going to have left over from the Bluey toy should work for this. Like... That brown I used for the nose I think should be okay for this. The hat and the dress I think will be good in either the lightest blue or I might make it darker. I've got some white. I just need potentially more eyes and a skin coloured cotton. But Georgie sells I think all of the colours and I really like working with that stuff. And the hook size for this is 2.5 so it will work out. Um, so that's one I definitely want to make soon. My favourites, I love Jane Austen, I do. And the ones I really want to make for myself is Marie Curie, because scientist. <laughs> I 
Um, and also I've got some other life things currently going on. So Marie Curie is like an extra special thing for me because there is a, I guess I'll briefly talk about it. I'm currently in the process of applying for postdocs and one of the things I'm doing is applying for funding and Marie Curie is one of the funding sources. So that would be amazing. And then <laughs> I did joke to a friend. I was like, would it be inappropriate if in my application for the Marie Curie grant, I also include either a picture or actually send somehow a actual crochet Marie Curie and be like, this is why I should get the funding. I won't actually do it, but it'd be funny. Ruth Bader Ginsburg, because how can you not? She even has little earrings in. So cute. So that's another one I really like. And what was the last one? Oh, yeah. Um, and then the other one I really love. They're all so adorable. Billie Holiday. Look at her in a beautiful dress. And the flower. Oh, so amazing. I want to make all of them at some point and be able to display all of them. But I've got to have some kind of an order to them. And what I really like is they kind of explain how you can mix and match things and make different types of clothes and stuff. So if there's any other, you know, iconic women that you can think of, you can just kind of follow their different recipes and make your own. Any skin color, any hair type, hair color and clothing and stuff. And I think that's absolutely amazing. So would highly recommend this book if you do crochet and you haven't got it yet. And... You know, it's a beautiful thing to make for yourself and have on display, a beautiful thing to make as gifts for people, because I think not everyone kind of likes soft toys and things like that, but I think they make really cute gifts. And so something like this is an amazing thing to gift a lot of, I would guess a lot of women in people's lives because, well, sometimes we just really need to be inspired and told we can do amazing things. Everyone needs it, but I think sometimes as women we have, I personally know I've had a rough time sometimes with my career, <laughs> not to get down and depressing, but so this is just really nice and to kind of, you know, support all of each other and lift each other up in the world. So really cute book and can't wait to make some of these. So when I finish the Bluey toy, I'll probably start the Jane Austen. Here she goes again. One in, one out, I guess is okay, isn't it? You're, you're never going to get your numbers down that way, but it is what it is. So that is all the knitting. Um, I think I've already said it, right? That more of the life update and stuff will be in the Dark Water Sweater videos and also the future videos I've got planned for other like Knit With Me style videos. Because I, th I want the space literally just to be talking about the project, talking about the yarn that's come into my life. If you're interested in a lot more of the life, kind of, I was about to say lifestyle stuff. I don't have lifestyle stuff, like tips to give ever. Nobody needs that from me. But if you kind of want to hear a bit more about, you know, my PhD and how that's all going. And now that I'm also applying for postdoc funding and postdoc positions, and also just, you know, life in York and how that's going, then I'd highly recommend checking out those videos. They are a bit more behind um, because when I record them kind of sporadically and then kind of release them one every two weeks to kind of fill the gap of this podcast. But I think it can still be quite nice because I typically don't talk too much about anything that's currently specifically happening in the world, though I did talk about Formula One about a race, but the kind of life stuff I talk about is kind of always relevant because I, you know, talk about how things have been. But anyway, it's something I'd suggest you check out if you want something to kind of um, watch and listen to while you're kind of crafting. So I think there's another Dark Water Sweater coming, video coming before the wrap up, though I might put them together, it depends. Um, how it all works out and how long the video is. And then I've got a new kind of series coming up of that, but with just a different jumper now. And that's everything. I hope you're all doing well. If you're in the Northern Hemisphere, especially if you're in the UK, hope you're enjoying the sun. 
Don't know if you can tell, I enjoyed it a bit too much over the last few days, especially yesterday. I wore sunscreen, I still got sunburnt because I was out for too long, so I've got a bit of a sunburn up here and here. It was worse yesterday when I was actually, when I got home, I was like, this is bad. <laughs> but it's mainly calmed down overnight. So if you're able to, you know, enjoy the sunshine, enjoy it safely, both sunburn and pandemic wise. Sorry to bring up the pandemic again, but you know, it is important and it is currently ongoing. Once again, as always, thank you for watching. I'd love to hear what you're working on. Um, I did mention my German video would be nice to know, you know, if you've got the book, because I haven't made anything from this yet. Have you made any? How have you found it? Or if you haven't got the book, but you're kind of or you have got the book, but you haven't made anything either. Or you haven't got the book, but you're interested. Which one would you make first? Because for me, it's Jane Austen, because I'm making it for a friend. But for myself, I would make Marie Curie first. This has to be. So I'd love to know, you know, which one would you crochet first? Or would you immediately go rogue and do the one different because you're upset that one wasn't included? Because there are a lot of iconic women. And you do see a lot of the same ones always repeated in these types of books, but it is for a reason. And I don't think there is a single one on there where I'd be like, you shouldn't be included in here. I always just find it funny when the Queen's included, especially if the book's actually from the UK, because I'm like, it's almost like legally required, isn't it? <laughs> she is incredible. I'm not saying she's not incredible. She's done amazing things, but it is always a bit funny to me. Um... Oh, yeah. And I think she's adorable. I'm showing the book again. She's adorable. With a little umbrella. Oh no, it's a bag. I thought it was an umbrella. And a little hat. Oh, looks just like a... But that's it. I'm going to stop rambling now. I need to eat some food. I need to have a drink. Um, and I need to get back to knitting and tidying up. There's a lot of stuff everywhere now. But thank you so much for watching. Please do, you know, give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Please subscribe if you want to keep up to date with just my podcasts. Um, or, you know, if you want to also keep up to date with the dark water swe sweater, dark water sweater videos and future videos that I've got planned. But I just, you know, love it if you did decide to stick around, share the video with people, let more people into this craziness. And you'll see me again soon. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.